this video, we're going to talk about a very important piece of equipment found in your computer, which is called a NIC. NIC stands for Network Interface Card. The Network Interface Card is essential to communicate within its own local area network or to gain internet access to communicate with networks around the world. These are two examples of network interface cards. On the left, we have a wired network interface card where an RJ45 cable can be connected. And on the right is a wireless network interface card where Wi-Fi signals would be transmitted and received through the attached antenna. Now this is a local area network connected to a switch. We have four computers all together. One of them I'm using the OSI model here as an example to show you how data flows through the OSI model to the switch. Now I won't be getting deeply involved in how the OSI model works because I have a video on this already and I'll put a link to that video in the description below just in case you would like to see more information on the OSI model. However, I'll, I'll briefly talk about the OSI model because when we talk about the data link layer down here where the network interface card resides, uh, in order to get a full understanding of, of the information you have here, uh, you need to know where it comes from. So I'm just going to briefly explain that to you, okay? Now at the top here, we have our computer here, which is connected to the OSI model. Now, if I bring up a browser like Firefox or Explorer or whatever, and type an IP address in that browser, all of that information, including the browser information, is at the application layer. Once I put that information into the application layer and hit enter, everything goes to the presentation layer. The presentation layer basically makes everything generic. Like everything we have typed is converted to ASCII. Um, if we have a picture in there, for instance, that we were sending, that picture will become a JPEG file. So everything is made generic at this point. So from there it goes to the session layer. The session layer basically puts everything in the session. Like if you have 10 web browsers up here at the same time, the session layer will separate those 10 web browsers so that they don't interfere with each other. And when you go to the transport layer, it would give them all port numbers. So everything from the application layer down to the session layer is called data. Okay, the transport layer is the first layer that's not in the computer. This is actually a router layer. And then we have the port number here. So we talked about port numbers a minute ago. I said if there are 10 applications up here that would all be divided up and given port numbers, that is correct. And this is where the port numbers will be given. Now we're only talking about one application right now. So this is a source port number for that application. And I give it source port number number two. However, in the real world, these port numbers are usually in the thousands, like 5,000 and 3,000, that kind of thing. And the computer generate these port numbers randomly. It's no specific port number for any specific site. It's just randomly generated. Now the destination port, which is port 80, these are not randomly generated. If it is a web page, it is given port 80. If it is an email server, it's given port 25. If it is FTP, it's given port 21, so on. Now next we have TCP. Now if you're talking about video or voice over IP, it's given a UDP protocol. However, anything other than video or voice, you use TCP. And this whole thing is called a segment. Now from here, we go from the transport layer to the network layer. Now the network layer, everything here in gray is brought down from the segment. And then we have the source and destination IP which was assigned at the network layer. The source IP address is a IP address is the computer that the information is coming from. In this case, is this IP address here. Now the destination IP address is the IP address that you're trying to get to. Like if you're trying to get this router, it would be 2.1. If you're trying to get this computer, 2.2, .2, etc. It's a data link layer. This is where all the network interface cards reside. And they all have a MAC address. Uh, this MAC address is burnt into the network card. No two network cards have the same MAC address. Like if you're coming from this computer here, this would be the MAC address for this computer. And if you're going to uh, this computer here, for instance, 
um, this would be the MAC address of this computer so you'll put that as a destination MAC address so this is all called a frame and this frame is all in zeros and ones right I mean I'm looking at it this way in text but in the computer world this information would be all in zeros and ones right so now at this point you go to the physical layer and you want to send these zeros and ones on to the local area network but there's no way to do that in that form so these zeros and ones have to be converted to whatever form the medium is in like for instance if you have copper like an ethernet cable here connected to the switch this network card would convert this signal to an electrical signal of zeros and ones zero being a low voltage like zero and one being a high voltage like approximately five volts so it will go from five back to zero back to five for the entire duration of this transmission now if it is a optical signal like it for instance it is fiber optics now this network card will be converting this signal to a light signal so it will be light off for of zero light on for one light off for of zero light on for one etc and and this entire thing is called a bit like for instance um it depending on the speed of the network card you can have a local area network being um, a thousand megabits per second if it is a really fast network or you can have it a hundred megabits per second I know back in the old days networks were really slow it used to be just 10 megabits per second but today uh, today most networks are usually between 100 megabits and 1 gigabit which is a thousand megabits per second now from here of course it will go to the switch and then it will go to whatever computer is assigned to go to now I'm not going to try to fit all the information that I want to give to you in one video because it's, it's going to be too long so what I'm going to do is divide this video into two videos I'm going to put the second video within the description below just in case you have problems finding it on YouTube in the next video we're going to talk about how MAC addresses and IP addresses are used to communicate using the switch as a central connection point on the local area network um, don't forget to click on that link um, in the description below to get to video number two now if this video has been helpful to you and and you would like to see more videos like this one please don't forget to click on the subscribe button below and also click on notification so that you'll be notified as soon as our new videos are released. My name is Trevor from Telecom Training. Thank you for watching.